This incompetent finance minister can't do math. She's going to blow through her own deficit this year by $7 billion. Wow. That's higher taxes and lower standards of living. Mr. Speaker, we now learn there are about 40 Liberal MPs that believe that this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost, crime and corruption. But there's this strange rule in the Liberal caucus that you need to have permission from the Prime Minister to speak at the microphone. So a Liberal MP wanted to get up and say quadrupling the carbon tax is a bad idea or doubling housing costs is making people homeless. They can't do it. Will the Prime Minister lift the gag so his Liberal MPs can say to his face that he's not worth the crime, the cost and the corruption? Once again in English, uh, none of these questions have to deal with the administration of government, but I see the... I, I see the... Order. I see that the Prime Minister is rising to his feet. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it seems that the Conservative leader is conf confusing rules of the apply within his Conservative yeah. caucus uh, to rules that we have in the Liberal Party. So the reality is, Mr. Speaker, we see at which point the Conservative leader is simply focused on playing politics and gaining power. Uh, that's why uh, he wants to talk about things uh, that are uh, not having to do with delivering for Canadians. He doesn't want to talk about the fact that close to a million Canadians uh, will be receiving dental care because of our Canadian dental program that he says doesn't even exist and that he's voted against every step of the way. May I ask the honourable member from uh, Battle River Crowfoot uh, to please uh, not take not take the microphone when uh, when the speaker is up on his feet or when uh, other speakers who have been recognized by the speaker is taking the floor. The honourable leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, I'm sorry to have to bring up this terrible rule. It's just that Liberal backbench MPs are coming and talking to all of yeah. us <laughs> to say that they're not allowed to speak to him. And they're wondering if I could perhaps pose some questions on their behalf. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I guess they can't get anywhere with the current Prime Minister, so they'd rather talk to the future common sense Conservative. Yeah. Yeah. his own MPs, will he let them get up to the mic tomorrow to tell him that he's not worth the cost, crime and corruption? The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the reality is he can't administer the government because he's too busy fighting for his job after nine years even if his MPs know it. He broke immigration, he doubled the debt, doubled housing costs, doubled crime, doubled the cost of living in a home. He wants to quadruple the carbon tax that's already forced two million people to a food bank, one in four kids to hunger, 25% of Canadians to poverty. Canadian food prices up 36% faster than in the States. Stats can says we have the biggest gap between rich and poor in our recorded history. His MPs know that he's broke the country. Will he call a carbon tax election so we can fix it? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition, like all, all of us in this House, know that Canadians are facing challenging times. His solution, however, uh, is to offer them cuts, is to offer them no programs that they can rely on, and to vote against things like dental care and pharmacare and investments in a green economy that is going to create jobs and careers long into the future. He wants to harm Canadians where we're focusing on delivering for them. He wants cuts to programs and services while we're busy investing in Canadians and their futures. That's the choice Canadians get to make. After nine years of the Liberal NDP government, taxes up, costs up, crimes up, times up. The parliamentary budgeting officer confirmed what Canadians already know. This incompetent finance minister can't do math. She's going to blow through her own deficit this year by $7 billion. Wow. That's higher taxes and lower standards of living. One in four Canadians are already skipping meals, and this Liberal made misery is only going to get worse. Why not call a carbon tax election now so Conservatives can fix the budget? Yeah.
the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I am so glad to hear the Conservatives talk about the PBO, because just a few weeks ago, the PBO did a report on the sustainability of the federal finances. And I'm going to quote what the PBO said, quote, current fiscal policy at the federal level is sustainable over the long term. In fact, according to the PBO, the federal government could even, quote, permanently increase spending by 1.5 percent of GDP. The only fiscal threat to Canada is Conservatives, who would cut health care, child care, national school fees. The Honourable Member from Calgary Forest Lawn. That PhD in Wackonomics has no clue. This incompetent finance minister, not knowing how to do math, Colleagues, colleagues, try to encourage as much uh, freedom as possible in terms of, uh, in terms of the way people express themselves here. I'm going to ask uh, honourable members. I'm going to ask honourable members uh, to, as much as possible, refrain uh, from using language which is directed at a particular member and is considered. Uh, uh, insulting to those members. So I'm going to uh, uh, encourage all members, and I've spoken about this in a previous ruling, I'm going to ask the Honourable Member uh, from Calgary Forest Lawn uh, to, uh, to start his question again, but to rephrase his question so that he doesn't use that kind of language. That sounds like liberal economics, and this incompetent finance minister not knowing how to do math ensured 50% of Canadians can't afford basic necessities like food. She'll give cushy contracts to rich liberal insiders while telling the 2 million Canadians she sent into a food bank they can solve their liberal-made misery by cancelling their Disney+. Plus. She knows higher deficits lead to higher taxes and lower standards of living. She just doesn't care. Why not call a carbon tax election now so Canadians can fire these economic uh, arsonists? I'm going to come back to members on this matter, but I'm going to encourage all members. I'm going to encourage all members to please keep their counsel when they're not recognized by the chair. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, thank you for your remonstrations, but I have to tell you, speaking for myself, puerile playground insults from the maple syrup manga. Don't bother me. Yes. 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 As, as I mentioned, precisely the reason why we should be very mindful of our language, because the things will be said on all sides which is going to be disturbing to the, to the order of the House. I'm going to come back to this matter, and I'm going to uh, ask the Deputy Prime Minister to start her question again without uh, using those words. The Honourable, uh, the Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I can handle it. But what makes me really mad, what I can't handle, is hearing crocod seeing crocodile tears from these Conservatives. The only time they care to notice vulnerable Canadians is for a partisan photo app. And we know they don't care because they are a 
opposed to a national school food program that is feeding 400,000 Canadian kids. They're opposed to dental care that is ha helping a million. We care about Canadians, they just care about themselves.